Hi guys! Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a crochet tutorial on how to make this beautiful spiral sweater. This was a labor of love. I mean, let me tell you, it took me weeks <laughs> to get it right and a couple prototypes as well. But after a lot of trial and error, I did a lot of sketching to try to like come up with a good pattern for this. And I think I came up with a really good one. And I hope you guys think so too. And I also hope you make one of your own because seeing your tags just makes my day so much better. And just all of your love and support has been so amazing. And I really, really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much. If you have any other um, things you'd like to see me crochet or you'd like to see me do, I have so many ideas. But if there's anything that you guys think of that you want me to do and you want me to show you how to do, just let me know. I'm always open to that. <laughs> I mean look at how cool it is it just turned out so well so 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 well exactly what i had envisioned for, envisioned for my sketch and with a lot of trial and error it came out definitely the way i wanted and i hope that you grab your yarn and your hook and you make one with me let's go ahead and make a really cool sweater first we're starting off with the yarn that i'm using i have big twist twinkle yarn and some of this beautiful Lion Brand Heartland yarn in purple. And I will let you know how much yarn, approximately a uh, rough estimate of how much I use at the end once I'm done with the project completely. Also, I'm using a five millimeter hook and you're going to need scissors, a tapestry needle, and possibly a measuring tape if you like to have exact measurements. Also, you're going to need some knit blocking mats and some pins. Let's get started on how to crochet the spiral first. So I'm going to use the purple yarn first. So now I'm just going to begin with a magic circle. So I have the short end of the yarn here and the long end here and I drape it over my three fingers. And then I grab the long end, pull it across so I have an X. Now I'm gonna take my hook Go under this loop, grab this loop with my hook, and pull the loop up. And now I'm just going to chain one to secure that circle, just a nice little chain one there. So that is how you do the magic circle. And that's what it looks like. Now in our magic circle, we are going to do two single crochets. One. I also forgot to mention that you're going to need stitch markers. I have bobby pins, but you're going to need stitch markers for this project. To make the spiral, you're going to only need two. In that first single crochet that we made, we are going to attach our stitch marker right in that V stitch, right there. So there we have our first stitch marker. Now we have two single crochets. Now we are going to make two half double crochets. One. And now into the magic circle, we are going to put two double crochets. One, two. So that's what we have so far. And now we are going to pull up our purple yarn and we're going to set that down. And now we are going to add our next color. You can add in your color in any way that you want. But what I'm going to do is I feel more comfortable if it's tied on so I'm going to tuck it right up next to that second double crochet that we made and I'm just going to tie it and we're nice and close to that double crochet so I'm just knotting it twice and now we have our second color attached so now I'm just going to insert my hook Grab the yarn, make a chain one, and then tighten it just so I have a stitch to start off with. Just make sure it's nice and tight so you can't really tell there's a chain one there. And now we're going to do the exact same six stitches that we just did with the purple. So we're going to do two single crochets. So I have my first, my second, and then again, we're gonna grab our stitch marker and mark that first single crochet and now we're going to do two half double crochets. One, two, 
and two double crochets. One, two. Now I'm gonna pull up my black so I don't lose that stitch. Now I'm just going to take the end of the magic ring and pull it closed. So that is what we have so far, <laughs> very tiny. And now I'm going to go back to my purple yarn. And now I'm going to take out my stitch marker here. And I'm going to put two double crochets in that first stitch. And then I'm going to mark the first double crochet with my stitch marker. So as you can see, I put my stitch marker back in that first stitch that we made. And now in the next stitch, I'm going to do two more double crochets. So one, two, we are just increasing in every single stitch. So we have four, five, six. So now we are just going to do in the next stitch, another increase of two double crochets in that same stitch. So now we have eight. And in the next stitch, we do two stitches again. So now we have 10. And if we're going to double it, we need 12. So now, as you can see, this stitch is always hard to see, but don't forget it. You just pull it back just a hair, and we have a final stitch right there. Don't forget that one, because that is the final stitch of this round. So now we increased by two in every stitch, which means we have 12 stitches. So I'm just going to pull up my purple loop and I'm going to go back to my black yarn. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did with the purple by increasing in every single stitch. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker. One. Two. Don't forget to mark that first double crochet. Now we have two. Now we're going to increase in the next stitch as well by adding two double crochets. One two, increase in the next, two double crochets in the next, and the next, and that last stitch, all the way up to the stitch marker. The stitch before your stitch marker is your final stitch of that row. And you can go back and count your stitches if you'd like. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's how many you need. So now as you can see, it's kind of turning into a little bit of a spiral. So now I'm going to pull up my black yarn and go back to my purple yarn because it just switches back and forth between the two colors. So now I'm going to pick back up my purple and we are on the next row. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker and in the next stitch, add two double crochets. And then reinsert my stitch marker in that first double crochet of the row. And now in the next stitch, we are just going to add one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're going to do an increase. And then in the next stitch, we are going to just do one double crochet. And in the next stitch, we are going to do an increase. And the next stitch, just one double crochet. And the next, an increase. So basically, you just go back and forth between increase, no increase, increase, no increase. And then in our final stitch, we have our one double crochet. And then we pull up our purple loop and we go to our black yarn or whatever color you have. I'm gonna pop out that stitch marker 
do two double crochets. In the first stitch, we are just going to replicate that same row that we just made for the purple. So I'm putting my stitch marker back in that first stitch. And now we're just repeating the exact same thing that we did for the previous row with the purple. We are doing an increase in every other stitch. So we have increase, no increase, increase, no increase, increase, no increase, all the way around the row. We are ending on a no increase. There's our stitch marker stitch, and we're stopping before it. Pulling up a loop for our black. And there's what we have so far. And now we're gonna go over to the purple again, and we are going to start a new sequence. Now we are going to remove our stitch marker and in the next stitch, in the first stitch of the row, we are going to do an increase. Again, we're going to put our stitch marker back in that first stitch. And then in the next stitch, we are going to do no increase. And in the next stitch, we're going to do no increase. So we're going to have an increase, no increase for two stitches, and then an increase in the next stitch. So no increase for two stitches, just one double crochet in each stitch, just for two, the next two stitches. And then in the next stitch, you are going to do an increase. No increase for the next two. And then an increase in the next of two stitches in one stitch. No increase, no increase, and now increase. No increase, no increase, increase. And then we have our two final stitches here. And we are going to do no increase in those final two. Then we're going to pull up our loop Go to our next color, our second color. I'm gonna pop out our stitch marker for a sec. We're going to do the exact same thing that we just did with the purple. We're going to do two double crochets. In the first stitch, we insert our stitch marker. And then in the next two stitches, we are going to do just a regular one stitch in each stitch, so no increasing. And then in the next stitch, we are going to increase the next two stitches, just normal, one stitch in each stitch. The next one, after the second, you're going to do an increase. And then in the next two, no increase. And then in the next, you're gonna do an increase. No increase for the next two stitches. Increase in the next. No increase in the next two. Increase in the next. And then in those final two, just one double crochet. Pull up our black. And there is what we have. So now you can tell it is turning into a very nice spiral. Now we're going to work on our next round. Pop out our stitch marker. Two double crochets in the first stitch. Like always. And mark our first stitch like always. And then now um, remember in the previous row we did a increase 
normal, normal increase. Now we are going to increase our normal stitch by one by doing three, one, two, three, increase, one, two, three, increase. So instead of doing two, we're going to do three. So now we're going to do three normal stitches, one, two, two, three, increase. So we're just going to have three normal stitches in between each increase. So one, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. One, two, three. increase and then we have our three stitches left so just our normal one two and three pull up our loop go to our black yarn pop out our stitch marker and do the same exact sequence that we just did two double crochets in the first stitch always two double crochets in the first stitch, always an increase in the first. And now we are going to have three stitches, again like we did with the purple, in between our increases. Two, three, increase, one, two, three, increase, and I'm just going to continue this sequence all the way around this row of three stitches in between each increase. Two, three. Okay, so now we finish that row. And now we're going to get our purple again. And now for this row, instead of having three stitches in between, we are going to have four. So every single row, the sequence changes of stitches in between every increase just by one. So you do all the way around the purple till you get to the black, then you go all the way around for the black, and then you start over with the purple. So that is whatever size that you choose to do for your spiral, that is all that you have to do. So for this one, we'll do a couple more rows together, and then I think you'll be, you guys will be confident enough to do it on your own. But basically, now we're going to have four stitches in between every increase for this row of the purple. Then we're going to do the same exact thing for the black, all the way around. And then the next row of the purple, we're going to have five stitches in between every increase. And then, you know, so on and so forth. But every single first stitch gets an increase, just so you remember that. And then you just insert your stitch marker into the first double crochet increase of that row. So basically this pattern repeats itself consistently quite nicely. So now we have four for the purple and the black, then we're gonna have five in between, then we're gonna have six, seven, eight, and it could potentially go on for forever. So we'll do a couple more rows together just to get you guys super confident in this. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and in that stitch here, we are going to ins make our increase and then we reinsert our hook in the first stitch. And now we're going to have four stitches in between. One, two, three, four. Increase. One, two, three, four, increase, 
one, two, three, four, increase, one, two, three, four, increase. And I'm just going to continue that all the way around till I get to here. Count to my final stitch. There's what we have. And now I'm going to do the same exact sequence that I did for the purple by having four stitches in between each increase. So I'm going to increase in the first, insert my stitch marker into that first stitch, and then do one, two, three, four, then my increase, and then one, two, three, four, increase, and I'm going to repeat this all the way till I get to the stitch before my stitch marker. Got to my last stitch, pulling out my black so I don't lose that stitch, and then I'm going to rotate, oops, I'm going to rotate to get to my purple, but there we have our lovely spirals so far. And now, I think you guessed it, we're gonna have five stitches in between each increase for the next row. So pull out our stitch marker, start off with our increase, put our stitch marker back, and now we're going to do five stitches in between instead of four. So one, two, three, four, five, and then our increase. And starting that over with one, two, three, four, five, increase, one, two, three, four, five, and increase. So now I'm going to keep doing that until I get to the black yarn. So I did my last stitch of the sequence with the purple. Now I'm going to pull that out and then grab my black yarn. Pop out that stitch marker. And then do two double crochets in the first stitch. Put our stitch marker in the first. And then we're going to start our sequence that we did with the purple with five stitches in between every increase. One, two, three, four, Five, and then our increase and we're going to repeat this all the way around until we get to our stitch marker. All right so I reached my end of the sequence here. I'm gonna go rotate go to my purple and now I think that you guys are good to continue going on for as many rows as it takes you um, I made my first panel already. I forget how many, but I will let you know in just a sec with the next jump cut. But basically what you're gonna do is just keep on going with this same sequence that we've been doing, by, but adding one stitch in between every single row. But make sure you do the same sequence for each color. So our next one is going to be six, right? So we're gonna have six stitches in between. So we're gonna do that for the purple all the way till we get to the black. And then we're going to do the same exact thing for the black. So don't 
forget to do the same exact thing with the black and then start over with your purple or obviously whatever colors that you have, but make sure that you do it for both colors all the way around the same sequence. So now we're gonna do two double crochets in our first stitch for our increase. Then we're gonna have six stitches in between, increase, six stitches in between, increase, you know, all the way till here, do the same thing. And then we're going to do the next row with seven and then both colors, next row eight, next row nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, however many. So go ahead and do that. And I will see you in just a second. Okay, so I just checked my notes and I ended with 13 in between. So now we're on six. So I ended on 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if you wanna do that too, of course it's dependent upon your size, but I'm just letting you know that I ended on 13 stitches in between every increase. And now I'm just working on my spirals and don't forget you have to make two. So go ahead and make two of your spirals. They're super fun and easy to work up. So go ahead and have fun with this. I finished until I have 13 stitches in between each increase. So now I'm just gonna finish off the circle. So I'm gonna go to my purple. Take out my stitch marker. And then in the next two stitches, I'm going to do one half double crochet. So one half double crochet, another half double crochet. And then I'm gonna do one single crochet and another single crochet. Oops. That one messed up, so I'm gonna do that again. Oh my gosh, I'm like, <laughs> I'll get it this time. Okay, and then in the next stitch, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch, chain one then cut my yarn, pull out my hook, tighten it a bit, and then I finish off the circle. So basically what I did was we have, of course, our double crochet, and then I picked two smaller stitches, which is half double crochet, and then the next small, smallest, which is single crochet, and then of course the slip stitch and the chain one to finish. So now we're gonna go over to the black yarn and do the exact same thing. So I'm just grabbing out my stitch marker and then in the next two stitches we did one half double crochet and then in the next two we are doing single crochets then slip stitch chain one cut yarn pull out hook you know the drill so we have two half double crochets two single crochets slip stitch chain one cut yarn pull out yarn and that's how you just finish off the circle There is our circle all finished. The easy part is the spiral. The hard part for me was figuring out the square, like how to make it a square. And I already have one of my panels done into a square. Um, but for this part, you need knit blocking mats. You need blocking mats and a lot of pins to block your square once we make it a square. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna add three more rows of our square pattern. Um, you can add more if you want, or, and you can also add more to your spiral, like more rows to your spiral. If you want this to be bigger, you can add less if you want it to be smaller. You can add more of the square rows. Want to count every single stitch on the outside and count very carefully because you want to be accurate. So you want to know how many stitches are on yours. And if you have mine, you'll probably have the same amount of stitches that I do. Um, I have, let me check my notes real fast. Okay, I have 180 stitches, but what you want to make sure is that it's divisible by four. Um, so if yours is not divisible by four, then what you're going to want to do is not finish your circle. Um, you're gonna want to, or if you did, that's fine. You can just remove this stitch here. And then you're gonna wanna add a couple double crochet increases just until it's divisible by four, because what you're going to do is put a stitch marker in each corner to make the corners. And you want them to be perfectly in the, uh, you want the corners to be perfect. And I'll explain this more, so don't worry. <laughs> but so on uh, mine just automatically with this, I had 180 stitches and yes, we all know that's divisible by four. If you're like me and you have this 13 in between, you should have 180 stitches 
going all the way around. So that means you're going to put your stitch marker in every 45th stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really fast. So I'm gonna start off with this stitch here, the one with the, um, with the slip stitch and the chain one. Don't forget to count that one. It doesn't like look like a proper stitch, but don't forget to count that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So that's where we're putting our first stitch marker. Because what you wanna do, we divided 180 divided by four, which equals 45. So that's why we're putting one stitch marker in every 45th stitch. So now let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Okay, so that's number 45. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Here we go. And then I'm just going to count these guys, the rest of these, just to make sure that we're accurate. So 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. And we are perfectly accurate because remember our first stitch was this one. So our count is perfect. And I love that it worked out that way. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to lay, whoop, don't wanna move the stitch marker. So I'm just gonna lay this out really quick and show you guys what we're working with. So now this and this and these bottom ones here, those are all of the corners. So this, this stitch right here is where the corners, the four corners are going to be. So just to recap, we have 180 stitches. We divided that by four because there are one, two, three, four corners. We get 45. So that is why we put one um, stitch marker in every 45th stitch. And then we counted it, everything's perfect. So now, the thing is, is that we cannot do double crochets all the way around, right? Because then it's just going to be like we're doing the same circle. So you know how we did right here at the end, how we did half double crochets, single crochets, then like, you know, just to make it smaller. So it kind of was like a nice, even, you know, close to the circle. That's basically what we're doing right now. So the tallest stitch that we're going to be using is a treble crochet. And the treble crochets are going to be more so around here because you want a square. I will show you what I mean on my sketch. So as you can see, I drew out the square because we have, let me just put our circle back up. We need to build up our stitches so we can make this circle into a square. And this was, this took me a bit. Like I actually had like two others before this that were like, eh, they didn't quite work. So I decided to draw this diagram and it kind of totally helped. So our tallest stitches, which are treble crochets, are going to be, as you can see, right here, right where we need to have our point. And now, as you can see, when we get to this point here on our circle, those need to be smaller stitches. So we need to go from big stitches, our treble crochets, double crochets here and then half double crochets and then single crochets because this is more of like we want our square to be going you know like this so we need our big stitches treble crochets here and then as it gets a little bit more even with this here we need to add double crochets and then ha uh, half double crochets and then single crochets because they're quite flat so I figured this all out based on the 45 stitches and I figured out how many stitches we need. Um, and it just took me a bit, but it's still, once it's done, you'll be like, um, it looks still a little bit wonky, but the blocking mats will help with that. And if also you want to add more rows, 
I only did three. I might add more. We'll see how it looks because um, mine is still being blocked. So as you can see here in my diagram, I have 10 single crochets in the middle, five half double crochets, then six double crochets, and then six treble crochets. And then our corners, which are two treble crochets, chain two, two treble crochets. And that is just consistent going all the way around the piece. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I know it looks kind of intimidating right now, but once you get it, it's super simple. So we're actually gonna start off in a corner. So we have a stitch marker here. I just picked any corner. And then I'm just going to insert my yarn. And I'm just gonna tie it just so it stays secure. And then I'm going to, whoops, and then I'm going to chain three, which counts as my first double crochet, because remember for the corners, we have two treble crochets, chain two, two treble crochets. So I'm going to chain three, but that's going to count as my first treble crochet. So then we're gonna do another one, right in that same exact stitch. And then we're going to chain two, and then two treble crochets, in that same stitch. So there we have our first corner. And now like in my diagram, in the next six stitches, we are going to do treble crochets. So one, two, Three, four, five, and six. And then in the next six, we are going to do double crochets. So one double crochet, two, three, four, five, six. And then in the next five stitches, we are going to do one half double crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now we are going to do 10 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're going to go backwards. We have our ten single crochets and then we had our five half double crochets. So now we're going to do five half double crochets to build up to treble crochets for our next corner. So now we have five half double crochets in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the next six stitches, we are going to do double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now in the next six stitches, we are going to do treble crochets. One, two, three, four, so much of my golden retrievers here, four, five, and then six. And then we have our corner, which is two, treble crochets, chain one, chain two, and then two more double crochets in that same stitch. So all in that one stitch is two treble crochets, chain two, two treble crochets. So there we have our second corner. Now we're just gonna rotate. And now we're going to repeat the same thing. 
So six treble crochets, two, three, four, five, six, oh, six. So now we do six double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we do our five half doubles. One, two, three, four, five, and then 10 singles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're building up instead of building down. So we're gonna go with the next highest stitch, which is our half double crochets. We're gonna do five. So I have two already, three, four, five, and then we're gonna do six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we do our six trebles. Six, and then we have our corner. So what do we do? Two treble crochets. chain two and two more double crochets in that same stitch. Okay, so now we have the next corner and now I'm going to repeat that same thing with six treble crochets, six double crochets, five half double crochets, 10 single crochets, five half double crochets, six double crochets, six treble crochets, then corner. I'm gonna repeat it till I get to my uh, first uh, little chain three here. So I'm just gonna do that. If you need to rewind, feel free to do that. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'll be right back. So now that we've reached uh, the chain three, I'm just going to cut my yarn and we're going to slip stitch in our other collar in just a sec. Um, but as you can see, we're getting a little something. We're working on it. We're getting a little bit of a square kind of happening right now. Of course, the blocking it is, is gonna help a ton, but I'm just going to slip stitch in my purple so we can work on the next row. And the next row is, the next rows are completely the same except for one thing. So I'll tell you what that is in just a sec. So I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three here, um, add in my purple like I usually do by tying it with the previous little string here. Here we go. And then I'm chaining three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna turn my work. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing until I reach the corner. The corners are the only thing that slightly changes in this pattern, just, just ever so slightly. And it's not, and it's not uh, scary or anything, so don't worry. <laughs> um, but since we don't have a corner because we turned our work, I will go ahead and work the same thing um, with doing um, six trebles, six doubles, five half doubles, um, 10 singles, just like we've been doing, um, just like we've been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast until I reach, uh, this corner over here to show you guys what I'm talking about. And one more thing also to consider is that this chain three does not count in your first uh, like six treble crochets. So you're gonna wanna just forget that this one exists for now and then count your one, two, three, four, five, six treble crochets because this chain three is attached to the corner. So it doesn't count in our sequence of six treble crochets. So just so you know, cause that'll kind of, you'll, once you get to here, you'll be like, uh, my math is wrong, but it's not wrong. Just don't count this one in your, in your sequence. With your first actual treble crochet, 
is your first treble crochet in the sequence of six treble crochets, six double crochets, you know. So just don't uh, count this one. This is where I started. I did all the way to here. And now as you can see, I have my six treble crochets. But now we have our corner space and we've added two treble crochets to the sequence, which is totally fine. But now from now on, for however many rows you add, the count for the treble crochets is just going to be plus two for each row. So now we have, of course, we did six to start in the first row. So now we have seven and eight to reach our chain two, which is our technically our corner space. And then we'll do our two treble crochets, um, chain two, chain one, chain two, and then two treble crochets in that same corner space. One, two. So now instead of having, uh, instead of having six treble crochets, we're gonna have eight. And then the next row we're gonna have 10, the next row we're gonna have 12, the next row we're gonna have 14. It just goes up just because of the, we're just adding, you know, stitches and that's the only you know different thing about this so now we have just these added ones so now you just have to know okay instead of six we're doing eight so one two three four five Six, seven, and eight. And then we're gonna do that also on this side as well. It's just because we're adding the two stitches for the corner. And uh, yeah, we're kind of getting a little bit of a corner happening, which is awesome. And now I'm gonna keep going with this. Um, the next row, cause I'm gonna do another row after this and then I'm going to block it, but then I'm gonna go pull out my other one that I have had blocking for like four days now. Um, and I'm going to add another row to it. So depending on how many you add, now the first row had six treble crochets, the next one will have eight, next one will have 10, next one will have 12. Just so you know, that's the only thing that changes. And then you just do the same pattern that we've been doing, you know, slip stitch, you know the drill. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna do this row and then I'm gonna do another row um, after this with my black color. And then we'll be back up after that. So I just slip stitched into the top of the chain three and now I'm going to cut my yarn, chain one. Okay, so this is what it looks like, not blocked. Um, it definitely needs blocking because you can see it's kind of a little wonky. But now I'm going to go ahead and block this one and then I'm gonna bring you back the one that's been blocking for like, I think it's been three or four days. So I'm gonna go ahead and block this one real fast and then I'll go bring my other one that um, has been blocked for a while. And this is how I block my pieces, that how I've blocked my two panels for this sweater. Basically I just get my foam blocking mats and I use a ton of pins and I use the squares of the mats just to help me place the pins and place the piece very perfectly just so I can have a really nice perfect square as you can see um, in this clip here how I put it to with a ton of pins just to make it nice and perfectly square um, as you can see it's a little bit wonky but we're going to add a couple rows of double crochets to help with that and then I just spritz it with water and let it sit there for a uh, couple days. Now here is the one that's blocked and it's been blocked for a little bit now and now I think I'm going to, I might or might not, I, I'll try it out and see what I think, but I think I'm going to add a row of just one double crochet in every single stitch and then of course two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets for the corners, but I think I'm going to do a row of um, I'll let you know if it doesn't work out or look right. Um, so I'm just going to, yeah, attach my yarn anywhere, chain two, 
and then just do two double crochets in every single stitch and then of course in the corners two double crochets chain two two double crochets and then once I'm done with that I am going to show you guys how to do the sleeves so I'm gonna try that out see if it looks good and I'll see you in just a sec adding the row of double crochets was definitely a good idea so much so that I might add another row with black I just love how the double crochet though just like definitely finishes it off so that's a necessary step I didn't know if it would be but yes it it definitely it's very good so yeah I definitely think I'm gonna add another row and then block it but we'll see I'll let you know um, once all the pieces are done and everything um, but let us go ahead and work on the sleeves now now for the sleeves I'm starting out with a slip knot and then I'm going to chain 60 and this is definitely um, up to you with if you want your sleeves to be very form-fitting then um, chain a certain amount and then put it around your arm and if it fits you well then perfect um, but if you want like bigger sleeves like I do then just you know chain your amount um, and then go ahead and try it around out try it on around your arm because that is the moment that you can change once you have a ton of rows you can't really change so decide now do your chain of amounts and then measure it up to your arm see if it works and then go from there so I'm going to go ahead and chain 60 I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so now I have my 60 chains and then basically to measure it up, you just put them both together, put it around your arm, um, like under your armpit. And if it fits the way you want, then perfect. And if it doesn't, go ahead and add or subtract more chains. So now basically this is just super, super simple. The sleeves are very, very easy. So now as you can see, I have all my stitches here. I'm gonna skip one, two, do my first double crochet in the third stitch here. And then I'm just going to do one double crochet in every single stitch all the way down of the same color. So just one double crochet in every stitch. And then just keep going with that until you reach the end. So now that I've done double crochets in every stitch all the way down, I'm going to cut my yarn for this color because I'm just doing one row of each color. And then I'm going to bring in my purple. And I'm just going to bring it in by tying it, oops, wrong one. by just tying it in just like that. And then I'm going to chain two, turn my work. And now the first chain two counts as our first double crochet in the row. So we're not going to go in this first stitch, we're going to go into the second stitch. Just like that. And then we're going to just repeat the last row by putting one double crochet in every single stitch. So I reached the end here and now that little like last two stitches here, don't forget to go into the top of that for your final stitch. Just like that don't forget to go into that one then I just cut my yarn and I'm adding in my next color and now I'm just going to chain two turn my work and remember that chain two counts as our first double crochet of the row so we're gonna skip that one and go into the next one and every following stitch all the way down the row with one double crochet and this process just repeats throughout the entire sleeve it's just the exact same thing. Nothing different at all. Just one double crochet in every stitch going all the way down. 
And your last stitch, don't forget, is the top of that chain two. So don't skip that stitch. So all the way down, top of the chain two, cut your yarn, add the next yarn, chain two, turn your work, one double crochet in every stitch, and that just repeats for the entire sleeve. So keep going with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going with this until I reach the length of the sleeve that I want. I am pausing the video quick because the way that I folded the sleeves was completely wrong and I had to literally completely take everything apart. So I am pausing this. You don't make the same mistake. You fold it with the stripes going this way for the arm, not the other way. Um, so that all the seams are where you're sewing. You know what I mean? So if it, if you're having like a struggle and want to see how I did it, um, you can go back to my star sweater crochet tutorial and just uh, fast forward to the sleeves and to the assembly part and then I can explain it. I explain it like the way it should be done but all you have to do is just fold it this way like have it laid out so when the sweater's done the sleeves are going this way like the stripes are going this way and like I had it folded the other way so you just have to flip it um so yeah I'm having to like go in and redo the entire thing I had to take it apart it's a big old thing but I'm just redoing it now so stay tuned for me actually getting it right this time <laughs> I went in and folded each arm piece in half, each arm panel in half, um, just so I could have them perfectly even on both sides of the two middle panels. Um, since I have 38 rows for each arm panel, I counted and I have 19 stitches laying flat here on both sides, so that's half, so that's perfect. So I can go ahead and grab my um, stitch markers and start like attaching the pieces together, but I'm going to be stitching the um the neckline first so i'm going to go ahead and sew together my uh, neck hole so each side of the two spiral panels so i'm going to go ahead and start working on that so i just cut a long ish piece of my black yarn and i have my tapestry needle here and i'm just going to sew right starting right here so i'm going to attach my yarn right in here and I'm just going to sew. This is definitely dependent on how tight you want your neckline, like if you want it super tight or if you want it like fairly, fairly tight, fairly loose. I think I'm going to go for about 11 to 12 stitches on each side, but I'm going to do that and then I'm going to try it out and see, see what I think. So I'm going to go ahead and attach, attach my yarn with my tapestry needle. So I'm just going to attach my yarn in the corner space here and just tie it. And then I'm going to gently pick up my piece like that. And then I'm going to sew all the way down the seam here. So I'm just going back and forth in the V-stitches here. Just sewing it together. I did about 13 stitches, so now I'm just going to go back a little bit just to weave in my end, go back and forth just to make it nice and tight here at the end so it doesn't come loose. So I'm just going back and forth in the stitches a few times, and then I'm just going to weave in the end while I'm at it. And then I'm going to, after I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this same thing on the other side. Now that the neckline's done, we're going to work on the sleeves. So now I'm just going to unfold my sleeve. So I put down three stitch markers, one right here, one in the middle, just so I know where my middle is going to be. 
Um, I measured and made sure that it was even on both sides. I have my husband's measuring tape because I don't know where mine went. I don't know. I lost it, but <laughs> I measured on both sides to make sure it was nice and even. So make sure you do that, that it's even on this side and even on that side. So your sleeves aren't lopsided. And I cut out a piece of black yarn. And just like we did with the seams for the neckline, we're just going to sew all the way down from this part right here to the end there. So we're just going to go all the way down. So I'm just attaching my yarn in the first stitch here. It would have been way easier if I had woven in the ends on the sleeves. Like I, I wove in all the ends on the spiral panels, but I didn't do it here because they just looked so intimidating. There is so many <laughs> ends to weave in. So I was just like, well, maybe I can just ignore them and see what happens. Um, I just got way too excited to put this thing together. So it's just my impatience acting up again, but we'll see how it goes. If I have to weave them in and take a break, then, you know, we'll cross that when we get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just start using my tapestry needle and sewing the pieces together. I'm just going to pull up both sides like this, just like we did with the, just like we did with the seam up there. And then I'm just going to sew back and forth, just like we did with the seam for the neckline. Just going back and forth. So it's nice and secure. And we're just gonna do this all the way down the sleeve. I sewed all the way down the sleeve here and now I'm going to go to the other side and do the exact same thing that I did over here making sure that they're even with each other like both ends are even with each other just make sure that both ends are even now that the sleeves and the neckline is sewn I'm just going to fold it in half like this just turn it inside out like this so the seams are visible. Almost forgot to do that. Okay, now it's inside out and laying nice and flat, so I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn right here. So I'm going to grab a long piece of black yarn, and then I'm just going to attach it in the corner. Make sure your piece is laying nice and flat, and again, make sure it's inside out so that you can see your shoulder seams here. So I'm just tying it in the corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the piece up and simply just start sewing. So I'm just sewing back and forth all along the V stitches here, just in each one. And then I'm gonna do that all the way till I get to the armpit and then I'll show you what to do next. So now I'm at the armpit and I'm just sewing the panels and the available stitches. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple times in this oops, spot, in this spot right here, I'm just gonna, in the armpit area, I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple times. And then we're going to work on the sleeve. And this is not complicated at all. It's just the same thing that we have been doing. So I'm just gonna line the two up very nicely and just pick them up like this. And then I'm just going to sew them together like I've been doing all the other panels. Just make sure they're nicely lined up. So I'm just going to continue sewing all the way down the sleeve until it's sewn together. I finished it on that side and now I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did on the other side. Other side. And here is the finished sweater with the sleeves going the right way. 
it was such a pain to have to remove them once it was all stitched in so definitely don't do that but here is the finished spiral sweater i am really happy with it it's exactly how i wanted it to turn out and it did take me a while to figure it out and i'm really happy that i did just so you guys can enjoy it and you guys can make your own and i'm super happy with it i love it it's super cozy perfect for this time of year it's very unique very funky and I think you guys are going to love this too. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. And don't forget to tag me in your finished pieces. I love seeing the way that you guys use your own color combinations. It's just so much fun to see. And I always love resharing them as well. So thank you guys again for all the love and all the support. And I cannot wait to see your guys' finished pieces. I love you guys so much. Have the most beautiful day ever. And happy crocheting!